Good evening, campers, dreamers, and babysitters. After suffering a brutal attack on Christmas Eve, a young woman, Nikki, struggles to convince her friends that the assailant was old Chris Kringle. When Santa returns to terrorize the group, Nikki and her friends must fight to stay alive. This is my raw reaction review of Santa Isn't Real. Hey guys, and yes, I am back with a review, of course, as we kick off December, we are in full holiday swing with our holiday horror, and of course, Santa Isn't Real was something that caught my eye. I was able to check out the trailer, and I gotta say, when you have a group of kids and a killer Santa on the loose, um, you do not have to twist my arm in order to uh, check this one out. So I was able to obtain a screener for this one and uh, to see what it was all about. Uh, this one is directed by Zach Locke. Uh, not too familiar with him. He did direct um, in 2022 Float, and then um, he's probably most notably known for being an executive producer on the 2019 version of Black Christmas, which I know has a pretty negative following for the most part in the horror community, which I have not checked out yet. Um, so I can't really uh, put my two cents in there, but he's back with his own holiday horror. This is actually directed as well as written uh, by Zach Locke. So when you have that very particular idea that you want to get across, it's not really going to get lost in translation because you are behind the lens as well as creating these characters and trying to get that point across. So I was excited to get into this one and see what it was all about. Uh, but if you're not familiar and haven't checked out the trailer uh, this one opens up, of course, on uh, Christmas Eve, going into uh, Christmas Day or night, um, as our main character, Nikki, is uh, waiting around for her boyfriend um, as the clock strikes midnight. Um, she's having a drink, and old St. Nick uh, comes down the chimney. Um, in a more gruesome fashion that we're used to, uh, he does cut her wrist, and then hit her on the head, knocking her out. And then after that, we do a little bit of a time jump as uh, we catch up with Nikki almost a full year later. Uh, she wakes up from a coma after that attack. And uh, what do you know it? Uh, she is awake just in time for the holiday season. So that does bring back a lot of the PTSD that she has. And uh, we are introduced to some other characters, a couple of her friends. We have Nathan and we also have Jess. Um, Nathan is her boyfriend, the one she was waiting on at the very beginning, um, as she's kind of getting acclimated and figuring out the new friendship dynamic and everything. She finds that everyone's planning on going to a cabin to escape the trauma from last year. Um, and now that she's awake, uh, she decides to invite herself along. And then once we get to the cabin, we're introduced to the fourth member of the group, uh, MJ. Um, and that's where we really get into kind of our groove, I would say, of understanding the dynamics and where everyone does fit in. Um... Looking at the film, the trailer's cut in a fashion that really makes you think that this is probably going to be a real fast-paced film. I gotta be honest, this is anything but that. This is a real slow burn. It's way more psychological um, than I think the trailer made it out to be. This isn't just your classic um, killer Santa on the loose and tearing up a town. This pretty much takes place inside of a cabin for the most part during a snowstorm. But looking at the overall concept in general, I like the idea of this more psychological feel when we're dealing with this killer Santa. Um, but, you know, I think this film does have some problems, um, specifically with pacing. It is a real slow burn, and I do feel that runtime. And this is only about an hour, 16 minutes, but it felt way longer than that. I think there's a real fun way to do a psychological holiday horror film. And the concept here was intriguing, but I just don't think it was pulled off um, to the full effect that it should have been. It really did feel... Um, like the film was a little bit more bogged down than I was expecting. Um, and you do get those slasher elements, but it's one of those things where I think uh, the director tried to balance both a psychological thriller as well as that holiday horror slasher. And neither of them really lived up to the full potential because we were kind of um, diverting focus to each different kind of subgenre in a sense. Um, so for me, you know, it left me a little bit unfulfilled, I would say, more than I thought I was going to, because I'm a huge fan of holiday horror. Um, but, you know, it, it just wasn't something that really captivated me throughout. And to move on from that, I think maybe one of the reasons why I had trouble really finding my groove with this film was uh, the cast of characters. Um, 
Nikki is our lead for the most part, but you know, the way she's written, um, she comes off more unlikable than I figured our lead would, but the rest of these characters as well come off very unlikable. I really had a hard time finding a character that I was going to resonate with throughout this. Um, you know, you look at those slashers back from the 80s and their formula was create a cast of unlikable characters for Jason or Freddy to just kind of run through. And, you know, you look at this idea here, we don't really have that luxury of being able to resonate with our slasher more so than our other characters because this is a fresh character this isn't a killer that has a legacy like a jason or a freddy this is something that's new out of the christmas wrapping in a sense um and you know i found myself kind of not rooting for anyone it was just kind of being a spectator and uh, watching these events unfold it wasn't something that i really felt invested in and you know and that could have been some of the dialogue choices i was not a fan of the dialogue um a lot of it feels out of place. It feels like they've kind of just injected some scenarios to kind of get a particular point across without actually finding that transition in the dialogue. It didn't really feel authentic to me. It just felt like we have to say this in order to get a particular point across, and that's what the actors were doing. Um, so nothing really, in terms of the friendship dynamic for me, really felt authentic or likable in a sense. So it was really hard for me to get into the actual film itself from that aspect. Um, like I said, I enjoyed the idea of the concept, but I just don't think it was pulled off to its full potential. Um, there is some gore in here, but not as much as you would think for a holiday slasher like that. You find it more so in the back half of everything, and that's going to be another critique for me. As we got closer to the end of the film, it became more of what I was looking for. But by the time I felt like the film was starting to find itself in terms of that fun holiday horror, um, the credits were rolling. So it just left you wanting more because you felt unfulfilled. And I will say this has a strong opening and I think it has a pretty strong ending um, as well. But that middle half is a big chunk of the film and it just feels like I'm kind of twiddling my thumbs waiting for things to happen. Um, overall, uh, this one, I don't think I'm going to be revisiting at all. When I get into these holiday horrors, I always try to find at least some grains of ideas that I enjoy that I can kind of latch onto. And even if I don't enjoy the film, I'll still go back and watch it uh, because it is holiday horror. But this one, I think this is a one and done for me. Um, I've got my fill and it really was something I wish they would have taken advantage of either leaned a little more into the psychological aspect or a little more into just the killer Santa itself. So looking at the film overall, I think I'm going to give this one a proceed with caution. Um, I think, you know, some people may like it for that psychological aspect and maybe some of the killer Santa stuff may do it for you. Um, I think it might be worth a watch if you're really into some holiday horror, but I don't think it's going to work itself into the regular rotation of holiday slashers. But if the trailer does sell you and you're looking for a holiday horror that leans into a psychological thriller, this one may be for you. So um, by all means, go ahead and check it out and let us know what you think here. Drop a comment if you did check out Santa Isn't Real and let us know your thoughts. And after this video, why not uh, peruse the channel and see what else we have up there? We have a lot of great reviews. We just saw uh, Godzilla Minus One, which is a phenomenal film. So if that one is playing near you, I do recommend that one heavily as well as some of our thanksgiving coverage as well as uh, some scream 7 coverage here on the channel but that'll do it for me here guys until next time i'm luke janesco and stay scared